Do you know what's the G7? What's the difference between G7 and G20? And what are some of the major topics from this year's discussion? I'm Wade. And I'm Ruby. So Ruby, to kickstart this discussion, can you first tell us what does G7 stand for? Yes, I believe it's the group of seven because it's gathering seven different countries. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, can you name the seven different countries? Well, I know a few, but maybe you can give me a clue? Yeah, think advanced economies. Okay, let me guess. Canada, the US, the UK, Germany, France, Japan, and Italy? That's right, you nailed it. Uh, but did you know originally there was actually only six countries? Really? Tell me more. So in 1975, France, Italy, German, Japan, and the US were the initial members, which made up the G6. But later in 1976, when Canada joined, and then in 1998, Russia joined, that made up the G8. But I thought you said G7, is it because Russians out because of the Ukraine war? Well, sort of. So Russia was actually removed in, from the group in 2014 because of the annexation of Crimea. So are other countries allowed to participate? Yes, besides the seven, uh, there are eight other countries that are there to be observers. And they can join the meetings and these countries include Australia, Brazil, India, South Korea, Vietnam, Indonesia, Union de Comores and Cook Islands. Wow, interesting. So I heard this year's meeting was held in Hiroshima, Japan. How does it work? Yeah, so the G7 leaders take turns in their presidency and each year, whoever is the president, generally speaking, hosts the meeting and sets out the broader agenda. I see. So that's the reason why one of the major topics this year was the importance of nuclear non-proliferation to prevent a tragedy like before. That's right. Hiroshima suffered a nuclear bomb attack during World War II at the hands of the US. Hiroshima is also the hometown of Japanese President Fumio Kishida. Leaders discuss the horrific destructive nature of nuclear weapons and steps that they can take towards achieving world peace through non-nuclear proliferation. Yeah, we don't want anything like that to ever happen again. So what are some of the other topics discussed in the meeting? Well, so Russia was another major focus point during the G7 meeting, with the Russian sanction being the cornerstone of their agenda. They tried to mainly coordinate economic pressure to make sure that Russia reconsiders its military aggression towards Ukraine. Oh, I heard the main guest of honor this year was the president of Ukraine. Yes, Vladimir Zelensky attended the G7 summit where the leaders of the G7 recommitted their standing with Ukraine for as long as it takes by cutting the Russian business from the Western supply chain, reducing dependency on Russian energy, and limiting the country's access to the international financial system. Yes, we also witnessed a handshake between Zelensky and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which experts interpreted as a strong message to Vladimir Putin that shows his traditional allies might not be as strongly aligned with Russia anymore. China's recent human rights abuses, aggression in the South China Sea, and economic coercion through its Belt and Road Initiative also played a significant role in the meeting. Are you referring to the trip war between the US and China? Yes, but not only that, because of trade, the US has been heavily dependent on China, but competition with Beijing has become intense in recent years. And both countries disagree on various topics such as human rights. Like the human rights violation in Xinjiang? Correct. And also concerns about the peace in the Taiwan Strait and China's military activity in South China Sea. Wow, so how do they plan on addressing these problems? So they actually launched a coordination platform to counter the coercion and collaborate with emerging economies. While the details of this is still vague, um, it is likely that the countries will assist each other by increasing trade or providing funding to overcome any obstacle imposed by China. That must trigger China a lot. How do they respond? Yeah, so China actually released a 5,000 word document detailing the US history of interference in global economic affairs, dating all the way back to the Cuban Missile Crisis, and advised Western powers not to involve themselves in cross-strait relations. Wait, I remember at the same time, they also hosted the China Central Asia Summit, 
with leaders from the Middle East, right? I'm impressed, Ruby. You did your homework. Of course. It's seen as China's effort to counter the current Western-led world order by building consensus among nations traditionally overlooked by wealthy Western democracies. But I have a question. Aren't some of the members also the G20? What is the difference between them? That's a great question. As we mentioned earlier, the G7 is comprised of seven advanced economies. However, many argue that it's becoming irrelevant because the members are out of touch with the needs of many developing countries. So that means the G20 includes countries that have grown in economic and political importance in recent years, like India, Brazil, and China. That's right, so the topics they address are also different. So when it comes to the G7, they primarily focus on issues related to global economic growth and stability, while the G20 has a broader mandate to address issues related to trade, development, and political stability. But when comparing the total GDP market and economic advancement, doesn't the G20 have more influence on opportunities than the G7? The G7 represents the countries with a combined GDP of around $40 trillion, while the G20 represents countries with a combined GDP of over $85 trillion. That is a significant difference in terms of economics, but I'm sure there are downsides too, right? Yes, for sure. Um, and every group has its pros and cons, but the biggest issue with the G20 is that the leaders are representing too many conflicting interests and that has become even more evident in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But the G7 argues that it is small enough to still find consensus and take action on critical issues. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing to see world leaders come together to discuss the most important global topics and unite as one. They address not only the global trade and finance situation, but also humanitarian concerns, aiming to prevent tragic events like the bombing of Hiroshima from happening again. Well said, Ruby. We all hope for an end to the war and that we people will learn from their mistakes. And that's it for today's video. I hope you have learned something useful. And if you have, please hit the like button and share this video. Be sure to visit us on our Friday website, Friday.Asia. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.